College is hard. I get it. Trust me. I really do. But it's doable. It really is. Throughout the past few years, I've had multiple semesters with a 4.0 GPA, and I've also had a couple semesters with a 3.5, and the lifestyle disparity between these two semesters was actually a night and day difference. So in this video, I'm going to be comparing these two semesters and sharing with you guys what I did to get a 4.0 GPA versus a 3.5 GPA. What's going on YouTube? My name is Jason Lee. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I cover everything related from physical therapy, academics, athletics, and more. So if you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Getting a 4.0. It's a goal that many people have, whether that's for getting into med school, law school, PT school, or whatever else you're trying to do. A 4.0 is a major accomplishment and it's really doable. You just got to do the right things. The first thing is organization. One of the biggest things that led me to getting a 4.0 versus a 3.5 was my organization skills. That means having a notebook for every class, following a regular routine, and most importantly, this thing. Yes, a planner. If I'm being honest, using a planner consistently is the main difference of me being a straight A student and an AB student. This is because having the ability to write down all your homework, papers, exams, and other important tasks helps you make sure that you turn everything in on time. When I wasn't using an agenda, I would often miss small little assignments or quizzes, and I would either completely forget about them or turn it in for a small penalty, and that adds up towards your final grade. When I was using an agenda, I'd make sure to bring that thing with me to every single class, and the moment my professor would say a due date for a certain assignment or paper, I'd write it down immediately, that way I'd never turn anything in late. Trust me guys, using a planner is one of the best ways to start turning everything in on time and managing your study times efficiently. My recommendation to you guys is to get a planner where you're able to see your entire week in front of you so that you have an idea of what deadlines that you have to meet for that week. If you've never used a planner before, I highly recommend you try it out for at least one semester, I promise you, you'll be so much more organized and your grades will go up. The second thing I want to talk about is office hours, something I did not utilize during the semesters I got a 3.5. Guys, this is such an underrated way to improve your grade for two different reasons. First one being that some professors will actually bump your grade up or give you points back on your exams. Obviously, this is not the case for all professors, but let me give you a personal example. For my general chemistry 2 class, I was sitting at about a 92. And A in this class is a 93. I went to his office hours to review one of my last exams where I got an 82 on. And after about 45 minutes of reviewing, asking questions, and correcting my mistakes, he gave me 8 points back and bumped that exam up to a 90. This led to my final grade being a 92.5, which rounds up to a 93, which also secured my 4.0 all because I got some extra help at his office hours. The other reason it's such an underrated way to improve your grade is because you literally have the ability to ask the test maker questions on concepts on the test. Sure, YouTube, Chegg, Khan Academy, yeah, they're all fantastic resources and you should keep using them. But asking questions to the person who is actually making the exam is going to be a lot more beneficial than you think. There's really no downside to going to your professor's office hours as it can only really help you. Also, by doing this, you'll be able to build a good connection with your professor, which will be important for you when you need a letter of recommendation. Third reason, oh boy, if any professor's watching this, they're not gonna like me. But I'm gonna say it anyways, and that's ratemyprofessors.com. Use this website. For those of you who are not familiar with Rate My Professors, it is a website that literally rates your professor. It rates your professors from either a 1.0, which means that they are the absolute devil and they're terrible to a 5.0 which means they're the best and you should take them i'm telling you guys having the right professor is a difference between you getting an a in the class or you getting a c in the class guys i've used this website to sign up for almost i think pretty much every single one of my classes and for about 90 percent of them they have been very very accurate if you're signing up for courses next semester go to this website Look your professor up and see what other previous students have had to say about this professor. Whether that's about teaching style, grades, whatever it may be, you'll find a lot of helpful information here. During the semester I got a 3.5, I had to take a religion course required by my school, and I was kind of forced to take a professor with a 2.0 rating just because of my schedule. And let me tell you, it was not a fun class, and it was extremely difficult. Okay, yes, I know, I have to bear responsibility for my grade, but... Everything I read on that website was spot on. I'll leave it at that. Number four, start off strong. And what I mean by that is go over and beyond in the first half of your semester. 
Trust me guys, it is so much better for your grade and mental health if you start off strong and give yourself some wiggle room towards the end of your semester compared to slacking off in the beginning of the semester and then freaking out towards the end of the semester to try and bring your grade up. I've tried both and trust me, starting off strong is much better. All the 4.0 semesters I've had, I started off really strong by over-preparing for exams, making sure I don't submit anything late, and even doing extra credit even if I didn't need to. That way, towards the end of the semester, when burnout is most common, I had some wiggle room to make some mistakes without jeopardizing my grade. Guys, here's the reality of college. You're gonna be burnt out by the end of the semester no matter what you do. And the combination of that anxiety of trying to bring your grade up combined with that burnout is a horrible feeling. So for your own mental sake, Start off strong and give yourself that cushion to land on. Your future self will thank you. The fifth thing I wanna talk about is figuring out your study habits and routines that work best for you. It's gonna take some time to figure out, but that's fine. It's all part of the process. Whether you study better in the mornings or at night, find what works best for you and start a daily routine. Personally, I have a hard time studying in the mornings. In the mornings, I like to get a workout in first and then take a shower to start off my day. I work pretty efficiently in the afternoons, but the best time for me is right after dinner as that's when I'm able to lock in the most without any distractions from my phone or anything else. I personally also have a hard time studying in my own room, so if I have a lot of work to do or I have something really important to do, I'll go to the library because I get way too distracted in my own room. I also find that I study better in public if I have noise canceling headphones such as these so that I can't hear other people's conversations. Try studying at Starbucks at 8am or try studying at the library at 8pm. Mess around with the time and setting and figure out what works best for you. The last thing I want to talk about is make sure you take care of yourself both mentally and physically. Look, a 4.0 is cool and all, but if you don't get it, it's not the end of the world. Also, if you're not doing well mentally, it's going to immediately affect your daily routine, ability to study, and concentration. Your physical and mental health will always be more important than any A in any class. Make sure to try and get some exercise in throughout the week as well to get your blood flowing, reduce stress and anxiety, and to just get away from school for a little bit, you know? I also highly recommend you give yourself at least one night of the week to just escape school completely. If you're more of an extroverted person, this may mean going out, partying, whatever it may be, or if that's not your scene, stay inside, grab some Chick-fil-A, and watch a movie on a Saturday night. Not only is this beneficial for your mental health, but it's also beneficial for your longevity throughout the semester so that you experience burnout later. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you found at least one of these helpful, please hit that thumbs up button for me as I would greatly appreciate it. And if you wanna see more academic related content, you can hit that subscribe button right over here. And you can also check me out on Instagram right over here. If you wanna see how I got into Columbia University, and if you're interested in a career of physical therapy, I actually just made videos for both topics and you can find those right over here. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep grinding out there and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.